use the network, you know, uh, th this advantage can't be understated when you're looking at, you know, uh, a 5% uh, additional cost on top of uh, whatever it is you're selling, right? So you sell something for 100 bucks and you gotta pay $5. That's a, that's a significant cost, right? Especially when compared to the Bitcoin network, which will cost you what, like five cents? I think the transaction fees are being reduced 10 times, tenfold now, uh, in the very near future, if they haven't been already. So yeah. Uh, back before, I'm just gonna like point out this old fashioned technology here. Um, remember, we used to swipe in Canada, and now they only do that in the States, apparently. Um, with these, we always trusted that a signature that matches what you sign on a piece of paper matches the card. And we still have an authorized signature. Mine says Meat Popsicle. Um, <laughs> there, there was a uh, comedy on, on Zug.com uh, years ago about uh, the fellow who, I think he drew a, a he, signed his Shamu and he, uh, or he just started drawing weird things on the signature line and nobody ever looked. And so I started doing that too and it was true and nobody, nobody ever looked. Like we just, if you have the card, you're trusted. And we'll, we're still building the culture about what to do with trust in, in Bitcoin. And that's what's really interesting about this. And, and I think, yeah, you can accept a transaction that has zero confirmations. That's pretty much however I've ever done it person to person because first you don't have time to chase after them five minutes later, but the odds that the person you're dealing with actually had, knows how to double spend and, and do crazy things and, and rob you that way, it's not gonna happen. I have a question. Has there been a recorded instance of a double spend? Not well, there's I a lot of attempts on the on the blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. been no no none, none no of them have ever gotten the copy. No seeding stale hash. Yeah. So I guess keep your client connected to as many other clients as you can. That that will protect you from a double spend. Yeah. I'd like to point out that um, a percentage of fraud uh, is currently a cost of doing business for online retailers dealing in fiat currency. In addition to the uh, a few percent uh, for, um, uh, debit or for for taking debit or credit, the um, uh, people do that with credit cards. They, they uh, order something, they and then they dispute the uh, they dispute the charge. It's that is currently a problem with the old system. It is not, it does not seem to be a problem. Currently, with Bitcoin. Hmm. Well, transaction eligibility isn't that exactly what it is. He wants to do so badly. When you scoop the transaction ID, you get paid out from the exchange, you scoop the transaction ID, and then you go back to them and say that I didn't get paid. That's exactly that. That's the main, that's one of the main attacks. Right? That, that is what that that's is. That's one of the excuses that they use. What's going yeah. on? It is certainly an excuse, and it was definitely an excuse on the on the part of Mark Rapelli, the guy who uh, ran Mount Gox into the ground. He um, he was saying the transaction malleability because the, their automated systems uh, sent people their Bitcoin at the request of withdrawal. People would then request, you know, they change the the transaction ID, which is not really a transaction ID. It's probably a bad idea to call it that. Um, and then they'd go back to the automated system and say, look, the transaction ID you sent me. There's no transaction there, so send it to me again. Um, but that's the real problem with that, in my eyes, in my untechnical view, is that this is a bug that was known of for a long time. There were lots of uh, uh, implementations of uh, the Bitcoin client for uh, exchanges that took care of that bug. Um, Mark Carpelles, uh, because he was a diehard PHP programmer, didn't want to change. Uh, if transaction malleability actually affected Mt. Gox, and we don't really know if it did. Um, that was an unacceptable mistake uh, on his part. Absolutely unacceptable because everybody else seemed to be quite in tune with that, and for good reasons, because the fix to that had been standardized what, a year and a half ago or something. Sure, but it does suggest that there's people or software that can actually do that. Or it's a whole lie. I mean, there's, there's, there's players out there that are just yeah, they can they they can do that, but if you have a very standardized set of rules within your implementation, if you're if you're a Bitcoin exchange, for example, then it's not only totally avoidable, it just doesn't work anymore. So um, it's it's a bug that's been patched basically. So I guess if you if you have uh, an implementation that doesn't take care of that, that doesn't patch it, then yeah, I guess it's a problem. But same for a moment, assuming for a moment that it is. Uh, it was an exploit of a transaction, a transaction related exploit. 
that uh, allowed uh, someone to, or people to, uh, steal um, something like 5% of all the Bitcoins uh, currently in existence from uh, empty docs. The, uh, first of all, their accounting systems should have picked up on it. Second of all, the, um, the, uh, the call support people should have noticed. We, we're, we're getting all these calls from people saying they, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, they haven't received their payments. And well, actually, I, um, I, I, I know someone who um, uh, tried to make withdrawal uh, from Mount Gox and didn't receive the payment. Um, and then um, talked to them and did get her Bitcoin out shortly before they <laughs> spend it. Uh, it's like the uh, day before they sealed yeah, it. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and thirdly, uh, their accounting should have picked up that, hey, we have Bitcoins missing. Um, right. It seems like with Bitcoin, you know, there's all this stuff, this stuff like that. Firstly, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Like, what the Canadian company that went down was like seventy thousand yeah. dollars. It's not really a large number. Seven hundred thousand, but seven hundred thousand on the billion is not a lot. It seems like the stuff that is occurring is with personal blockchain, like not blockchain, but wallets. Or like empty gox was using their own wallet. I've never heard about Bitcoin theft from an actual Bitcoin wallet where you have to give away your password. It's just like the flaw in the system is not the system itself. It's just mm -hmm. unimportant user betrayal. Like if you're stupid enough to put your money on exchange, they say don't put your money on exchange. You're mining, don't keep your money in the mine. <clears throat> like, take it out, put it in a secure location. Like Bitcoin, as far as I can see, is extremely secure. It's just that mainly banks are hammering on it because, like, why do It's frictionless, right? If I can transfer $1,000 or seven cents, the only reason for a bank to exist at this point is to give me a loan. Like, they don't need to have buy more Bitcoin. Yeah, they don't need to hold my money. <laughs> like, if I can transfer my money to you or I can transfer money to a business, that's, that's exactly what money is supposed to be if we get a transfer. Originally, we created banks so we could hold our wealth because me walking around with a bunch of bars of gold back in the day was not a safe idea. So you don't need to put my money somewhere safe. And they made it, oh, you can transfer your money cheaply. Well, <clears throat> with Bitcoin now, it's just, it's finally updated money so we can move our wealth around. But it's, it's as far as I can see, it's extremely secure. It just seems like the issue with Bitcoin itself is people not, no, not, ah, people not knowing how to use it and the users not knowing how to use it. But that, that is a problem, though. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about a globalized currency, people have to know how to use it. <coughs> the, I mean, uh, I've been uh, a computer technician for years and years and years and years and years, and I can tell you one thing and one thing only. Malware is not the internet's fault. It's not Facebook's fault for giving you malware. It's your fault for not having it removed. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it, 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 this is your computer, it's your job Half of antivirus software, from what I understand, doesn't even recognize like some of this malware in yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. So how can it be your fault? You I understand it's being done. Yes. If you have an Apple computer, then your Bitcoin didn't infect you. You went somewhere you got to infect. There's right now there are there are market based solutions that are trying to address this. For instance, you have the well uh, at this point vaporware treasure yeah. hardware wallet, right? Um, there, there are ways to uh, make this secure for individuals that really have no mind of uh, how to uh, use a computer to actually properly secure Bitcoin, right? So, you, people like me, um, I, I am not an IT guy, and I have seen lots of IT guys say, wow, I had my Bitcoin stolen, and I thought that this would be totally safe the way I had it set up. But, truth be told, you know, it, it's very simple to slip up with this stuff. So the market is trying to address that by providing people with things like hardware wallets that uh, don't uh, that don't touch a network, right? Uh, places where you can store Bitcoin securely without having to worry about somebody, you know, just crafting your password or getting your password by a keylogger or something like that. There are solutions like that being developed, and I think that has to happen because I don't expect everybody to. I don't think it's reasonable to expect everybody to just become. You know, computer security experts. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great answer. Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, this uh, coin kite, the terminal yeah. they've got. They've got a debit card that goes in the terminal. So if you have your bitcoins uh, on one of their cards, it's just like using a debit card. So I really think, you know, technological innovations like that are going to be going to address that problem. 
And I ordered one of those coin pay machines. It should be here next month. And I've got a bunch of those cards coming too, so. I would like to have thought voice a potentially, uh, uh, potentially controversial opinion that uh, if and when uh, old style bankers uh, start dealing with Bitcoin, I think that'll actually be really good for Bitcoin. Because these are people who are very risk averse, who are uh, versed in uh, dealing with other people's money safely. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, that risk aversion is keeping them away from Bitcoin altogether right now. Um, I, I'd also like to point out that uh, today's security problems are, in my opinion, partly actually fault of the people who design the systems in the first place. The um, the fundamental architecture of, uh, of computer systems. We, we should not still be finding buffer overflow vulnerabilities. That is a known issue. We should not be writing programs have, that, that don't have the uh, uh, boundary checks in place. Uh, our programming tools um, should do that for us, and many of them do, but it's... Um, a lot of people don't most people don't understand computers. Also, the computers are, they should not be this hard to secure. <clears throat> okay, uh, John's gonna voice his opinion, but I think we can wrap it up pretty quick. We have like around seven minutes. I still want you guys to kind of socialize at the end. And John, your opinion on it? Get socializing. I, I'm gonna just leave the last uh, few minutes to, uh, to let people uh, again, trade business cards, trade ideas, uh, explain if you've set up a miner how you went about doing it, uh, make some good connections, and uh, uh, I'm hoping Nathan will say something about Crash Bang Labs too. Do you want to do that? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, we're doing that. Yeah, go on, go with that. Crash Bang Labs. What's Crash Bang Labs? Hi, everybody. Um, so, uh, I'm my name is Secretary, I'm the President of Crash Bang Labs. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and having such great questions and uh, perhaps intimidating our panel a little bit with your expertise. Um, if you, in case you haven't heard of us yet, Crash Bang is a uh, relatively new startup. We've been around for a couple of years. We're a cooperatively managed nonprofit devoted to providing people in the community with opportunities to learn about the relationship between right. technology, arts and crafts, community building, and uh, basically understanding how things work. Um, we have inventors, computer hackers, and artists who all interact together and learn from each other. It's a wonderful experience. And uh, we are now working on building some relationships with other groups in the community, such as, for example, the Queen City Hub, that graciously offered to host for us, as well as uh, John Klein and other guests. So we thank you all for coming out. And uh, just a little plug, uh, we are 100% self-funded at the moment. We have no grant money. We, we operate entirely off of donations and membership dues. So uh, we uh, encourage you to consider joining because the more people who get involved, the bigger the movement grows. And the same thing applies for all of these other groups that we're working with. It's uh, wonderful to see the community coming together with this. Do you have so, a uh, Yes, uh, our website is crashbanglabs.org. Uh, do not go to .com. That is uh, um, some kind of manga designer from the United States or something. It's crashbanglabs.org. Uh, we run a blog and uh, there's an online forum where people communicate. We also have a Facebook page. Would you accept Bitcoin for membership? Uh, have you got that set up yet, Marshall? We are in the process of working on it, but I don't think we've got it up yet. Um, Just open we can have a Bitcoin wallet. tonight if you need it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. We have enough brain power for that. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Please uh, socialize. Oh, we have one more question. Yeah, is this going to be a um, regular get-together? John can answer that. Sure. But, um, in arranging for tonight, uh, we had so many people who wanted to speak that we have another four lined up already for May. 
Uh, we haven't picked the date in May, so if anyone has a big preference late in May, then uh, let us know. We have to, of course, make sure it doesn't conflict with Cathedral Village Arts and a whole bunch of other fun stuff that goes on around that time. But that's uh, around the approximate time that I want to have the next one. Uh, maybe we'll have this space again if uh, Queen City Hub uh, uh, likes us and if we donated enough and all that stuff too. So um, uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it's been a great evening. It's been awesome. Potential next uh, meeting in May. I'm suggesting the topic would be dog coin, the search for more money. Um, I think that's the future right there. <laughs> I, I, I'm partial to jokes, guys. So thank you very much. You guys have a great evening. You take care. And thank our panelists. They came from everywhere. Great set of Highlands, sign 30. Go to all Highlands. Thank you. Uh, yeah. That's a user issue. Ah, okay. oh, user error. <laughs> that's easily fixed. Why, why do you ask? Please feel oh, free to uh, you buy your moderator drink. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I've got, a, I've got a new one coming in right away. Um, I don't know how successful it would be. It's like a, it's a toy. But, I get it. Yeah. I'm One thing nobody uh, talked about uh, is the concept, and this is what I think dog coins get to do, but it is the concept of...